Welcome to Horse Fights, your go-to source for keeping up with the show jumping world. Well, the Longines League of Nations landed on the U.S. shores and brought thrilling action to Ocala this week. The Winter Equestrian Festival in Wellington reached its penultimate week with another four-star, and the Sunshine Tour closed out their winter season with a four-star finale week. This week, we're going to give you a little rundown of the top ELO movers of the season so far and preview some of the horses as they prepare for the biggest event of the week, the only five-star, the finale in Wellington. Plus, we'll hear from inspiring U.S. show jumper Lily Keenan about what it takes to be at the top of her game. But first, let's take a look at this past week's big winners. Biggest action of the week took place in Ocala at the Longines League of Nations that saw Ireland victorious in the Nations Cup with an impressive total of only five penalty faults over two rounds to take the win over Switzerland and the USA. Martin Fuchs and Leonie J also won the Grand Prix in what proved to be an incredibly challenging course. The four-star in Wellington went to Lily Keenan and Agana Van Het Gerendal, where they made it a double, winning both the qualifier and the Grand Prix. And the Sunshine Tour in Spain concluded with a home win for Jesus Garmendia and Calias in the Invitational Grand Prix to beat out seven other combinations across upcoming Olympic course designer Gregory Bodeau's track. And don't forget... Welcome to Showstopper, powered by Equiratings. As many of the winter tours come to a close, we're going to take a look at the most significant ELO climbers of 2024 so far. With many younger horses stepping up to the higher levels and exposing themselves to the four and five star competitions, we start to see a lot of nine and 10 year olds build their ELO ranking as they perform against their older counterparts. Two big climbers for the young Lars Kersten mark a significant shift in this man's career. Funky Fred Marion Toff improved his ELO by 181 points since the start of the year, climbing to enter the top 15 highest rated 10 year olds of the moment. A total of six top 10 finishes at four and five star level meter 50 plus this year alone with a 60% clear rate. He sits on a current ELO of 694. Hallelujah, a homebred, was his surprise winner in the World Cup of Gothenburg and helped boost their ELO up 115 points to 679 since the start of the year. Denver and Michael Grava sit second on the list as they've been doing good business at the Sunshine Tour. This makes him one of the top three highest rated nine-year-olds of the year so far. The young Sophie Hinners and Iron Dame Sinclair won the four-star World Cup in Abu Dhabi in January as a newly turned nine-year-old, which helped the Cannes Stars win the first GCL leg of the season. Sinclair has moved up 111 ELO points to 686, but highlights an interesting fact about our list. It's not only the younger horses making a splash on the season so far, but also the younger up-and-coming riders who we could be seeing more from in the following years, especially with such promising horses. A few more on the list have spent most of the winter in Wellington and have made huge strides in terms of increasing their ELOs as they head into the WEF finale this week. A few notable mentions include Kyle Tim and Casino Calvin, who have jumped two of the five stars clear with time faults in some very difficult classes. They've moved up 96 points. Natalie Dean and her fabulous tiny mare Akata M have shown great performances and moved up 68 ELO points. Kendra Claricia Brinkop and two of her mounts, Do It Easy and In Time, have both had big jumps with increases of 64 and 49 respectively while Derek Kenny's Eddie Blue has jumped up to fourth on our list with an ELO boost of 113. Eddie is yet to make his meter 60 debut, but has already picked up some great placings at WEF this year, including a clear round in round one to help Ireland win the Nations Cup during week eight. It's sure to be a thrilling week as many of the top European horses and riders who competed at the Longines League of Nations last week in Ocala make the hop down to Wellington to try to swoop in and steal the spotlight from some of the tour's top stars. I have a feeling the locals aren't going down without a fight, however. Horse Bites, in partnership with Zara's Planet and Offbeat Riding Safaris, presents a $20,000 giveaway safari trip for two in the Masai Mara, Kenya. Last year, I went on the trip of a lifetime and got to fulfill a bucket list item of doing a horse riding safari. It was beyond my wildest imagination. And I knew I wanted to share it with our Horse Bites community. 
we partnered with Zara's Planet and Offbeat Safaris to bring you a once in a lifetime opportunity worth $20,000. Win a luxury trip for two to ride across the Maasai Mara in Kenya and experience the indescribable beauty of Africa and its bounty. Go to www.zarasplanet.com to enter, and we'd love for you to follow Horse Fights, Zara's Planet, and Offbeat Safaris to stay up to date on details about the contest. This week's Weekly Wonder, we got a behind the scenes look at US superstar show jumping talent, 27 year old Lily Keenan, as she gears up for a huge year. She is ranked 38th in the world currently with over 37 international wins to her name, represented the US at the World Championships in Herning in 2022, and she is already shortlisted for the Paris Olympics this summer. Lily won just about everything there was to win as a junior rider and has since made a tremendous name for herself as one of the U.S. squad's primary athletes. She holds a bachelor's degree from Harvard, has started her own equestrian apparel brand, and manages to do all of it with grace, poise, and grit that only the best in our sport are capable of. It's an honor to have her with us today. So you come from the most extraordinary family. <laughs> Brother is a professional hockey player, sister is a professional ballerina. How did you end up at the top of the sport in show jumping? I uh, definitely am from an ambitious family. Uh, and since I can remember, uh, my siblings, they were very passionate about their different sports. So it just, I was lucky that I found horses and it just was natural to really commit to what I was passionate about. Did someone in the family give you like the horsey bug? Definitely. My mom, she rode as a junior and I, she actually stopped when she was 18 and she had nothing to do with horses. Uh, oh for the beginning of my life and I got her back into it, but she definitely gave me the bug. Florida season is winding down. How important is WEF to your sort of yearly plan, especially building up for this year? So Wellington has really become my home uh, this time of year for us to be competing and being able to work at home at the same time makes it a little bit difficult, but it's also a huge privilege. Yeah. And I really try to balance kind of my goals throughout the year, starting from where we start in WEF and uh, try not to over jump the horses, which is hard here because there's so many classes and so much opportunity but uh yeah i think to have this like one epicenter where everyone is you can always bring like young horses bring them up as you're jumping a five star the same week that makes it a pretty special place what's your like favorite part of the season down here oh gosh uh my favorite part of the season honestly is in april when <laughs> it's ending and most people <laughs> leave <laughs> and uh i feel like i've accomplished something and, and get ready for for the summer right, well the finale grand prix is coming up next week and there's like a whole host of european riders coming down yes. from ocala does that affect strategy i mean how do you feel about them kind of swooping in like this yeah i mean in previous years, we remember when you had to qualify for WEF 12 and uh, really the whole season was aiming towards that Grand Prix. And now, obviously, the rules have changed. People can show up with fresh horses. So in some ways, maybe they have an advantage. I tried to not overjump my horse. Uh, that's why I skipped Ocala this week because I really wanted to aim towards WEF 12. So I think that it's going to be an exciting Grand Prix. Always when the competitors are their best, it just pushes you to be better. I try to take that perspective and, uh, yeah, hopefully can come home with a big win. Yeah, for sure. All right. You are already shortlisted for the Olympic Games. What does that mean and how does it sort of affect your strategy and how you're preparing for this big summer? Yeah. So obviously the observation events, uh, we don't know yet which ones that I'm doing, but I kind of shape the rest of my shows around that. And uh, of course, the goal is the Olympics, but just jumping for Team USA is something that I love to do. And yeah. right now I have a fantastic course for that with Oregon. So really uh, going through Wellington and trying to peak just enough, but not over jump them and really save for the big CSIOs that are gonna come June, July. Lots of big jumping to be done. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, lastly, tell us, how do you balance it all, right? You have businesses, you ride, you're getting ready for hopefully the Olympics. How do you find focus and sort of mental strength throughout, throughout it all? So as a kid, obviously I went to school full time and I rode. And I actually found that doing multiple things, I was better at my individual uh, pursuits. Uh, when I was at school, I was focused on school. When I rode, I was focused on horses. So actually being busy, I think, is a strength for me yeah. and uh, something that I'm well practiced in. So uh, yeah, I just try to really be in the moment. And I'm lucky that 
when things go wrong, I know that I have another chance and you're going to lose a lot more than you win. So to really focus on kind of the next goal and not get stuck in maybe the moments that feel like a step backwards. Yeah. Sort of be prepared for it not going well. Exactly. Just know that it's not going to go well sometimes, but it will go well again. What would be your top three tips for sort of focusing in order to keep on your goal of the Olympics? I think uh, number one is planning, uh, having a strategy and uh, trying to stick to it. Number two is being flexible with that strategy. And uh, even this season, some of my best horses, I had some injuries that I had to rework my plan. So being able to adapt to kind of the moment that you're in without just throwing the plan out the window. Uh, And then the third thing would be surrounding yourself with people that believe in you and are very organized. I think that's made a big difference for me. Those are awesome tips. What wonderful insight that was from one of our sport's shining stars. It's a tough game out there, but Lily is an inspiration to so many for her perseverance, determination, and pursuit of excellence. It's a pleasure to watch her and hear her expertise on what it takes to be at the top. After feeling inspired, let's not forget to be humble and take a look at some of the wild things from the past week. (laughs) All right, what do we got up first? Okay, she's trotting to this line, gymnastics. Whoa, she's got no hands. That's really impressive. Pretty good, and pretty big jumps. Oh, look at this. Oh, never again can you say a horse can't jump from a chip. Look how giant this jump is, and he's just standing still. Unbelievable. That was pretty impressive. And what do we got here? Fashion these days, I tell you. Are those boots that look like horse hooves? Oh, that's kind of creepy, but funny. <laughs> If these bloopers made you chuckle, be sure to hit the subscribe buttons for more. And if you have one you'd like to share, please send it along and get an opportunity to be featured on the show. That's a wrap on this week's top highlights. Stay tuned to all of our socials, like, comment, subscribe, and follow along all the action as it unfolds here on Horse Bites, your go-to source for keeping up with the show jumping world.